Hello, everyone. I've got my cup of coffee with me here. Looking forward to share an hour with you. And I have some fun projects. One of them I made, and it's going to be a design that you'll be able to download and make some for yourself. And then a lot of others are just kind of creative ideas of how you can take a, a simple design and change it up. I love taking something that is really simple and making it a little bit more complicated, but also a lot more interesting. For example, this is just a very simple lace design. And it, and it really is just a beautiful stitch out. It looks really nice. I put a little hook on it to hang on the tree. But there's so much more that we can do with a design like this. Instead of just using it simply like this, here's an example of I took the exact same design and I sewed four of them out. And then when I sewed them together, it created a three-dimensional ornament. And what's fun about this is you can see I've added some beads to the top. And I've got an actual bell that's hanging from the bottom. And so it really does give you a little bit of a, a fun, different look to a simple ornament. I would rather see something three-dimensional hanging on the tree than something that's one-dimensional. And as nice as the lace looks, this has just got a lot more fun to it. And then if you give it as a, an ornament, as a gift you will see that you'll get a different reaction to it when you're looking at three-dimensional ornaments. The ribbons up here were just sim very simple. I just twisted them around my hand and then tied a, a ribbon down the middle of it and then put it in place. And I used the wire that I'm hanging it with to tie the bell onto the bottom. So that's the same wire. So it's really very, very simple, but it's a really creative idea. Now, here's another idea that seems really simple. This actually is the beginning of an ornament. It's not finished. I haven't decorated it yet. But this was one lace design, and it was supposed to be an Easter egg. By changing the colors up, it um, made it a little bit more Christmassy looking. But whether you're making an Easter egg or you're making... Uh, a Christmas ornament where you want it to look nice. The challenge is when you sew them all together, how do you get them to stay so that they've got some firmness to them? Now, the when I started doing it, I was thinking, okay, what can I do? So I had this brilliant idea, and I'm sure some of you have heard of it before. But what I did was I took a balloon, I left the top of it open, I took a balloon, and I put the balloon in, and then I blew it up so that it pushed all the lace to the outside edges. And then it gave me kind of like a really nice firm edge. And then what I did, I'll take the balloon out now since we don't need it anymore. And then what I did was I took a product that is called fabric stiffener and then I brushed it on. What I found when I brushed it on is that some of these little delicate edging that you're seeing here that have all the holes with them filled with the stiffener and I didn't really want that to be there. So I took a blow dryer and just blew it out so that the holes didn't fill with that uh, stiffener on it. But after I've done that and it dried, now it's stiff. It won't go anywhere. And it's going to kind of let me be able to hang it on the tree without having the shape change with it. If you don't put some kind of stiffener on it for something that's this big, then it will tend to collapse on you and you won't be able to use it. With the bell, because the way that the shape is made, I did not use any stiffener with this. And it was firm enough, the design was firm enough that it really held its shape. The other thing I could have done with this would have been, instead of using four panels, I could have used five panels and it would have made a bigger bell. So as you uh, add more panels to it, you get a different look. With this shape here, I added uh, five panels, so it made it very big. If I would added three or four panels, it would have been much smaller. Now, the very last thing I did when the stiffener was still a little bit damp was I added some glitter to it. I took my um, just a little thing of glitter and I poured it on the put the ball over some paper and just sprinkled some on while it was still damp. And so the sprinkling just is a little bit more random but i think it does look like i've used metallic threads to it you can see a lot of the sparkle there it looks like i've used metallic thread but really i haven't if you wanted just to have the edge have sparkle with it you could put the sparkle on a piece of paper dampen that part and then just roll it in it 
and it would get the sparkle just on the very outside edge, which can kind of give you a really um, a little more delicate look because you don't have all that sparkle and there's less sparkle to fall off and around the rest of the house too, but it does give it a little bit of an edge. Now, when I'm making uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to show you how you can make your own three-dimensional Christmas ornaments. This was done right in the machine using applique creator and shape creator. And I added my decorative stitches. This was all done in the hoop. So I'm going to show you how that's done. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you is this little project. And I'm just delighted with this. I can't tell you how much fun this is. This was a little project that I made that you can see I've got these little leaves here. And it was an in-the-hoop project. I stitched it out. And then I put it together. I'm going to show you how this is done. And this is going to be a design that I'm going to share with everybody. And uh, it's going to get posted to the FOF website uh, on the blog next week. So keep an eye out for it and go and visit the page so you can see um, if it's been posted. The um, There was a question about whether you need to put stiffener on snowflakes. And that's not always necessary. Like when you're looking at a lot of lace designs, this one is very floppy, right? So this one, if you wanted this to stiffen up, it would need to have some stiffener on it. But for a lot of them, they're very heavily stitched and many of them have many, many stitches and they don't need to have um, a stiffener on them. Uh, I'll come back to this in a minute. And uh, I wanna just show you a little bit. These are meant to be little boxes that sit on your table for a place setting. And then you can put somebody's name. You'll see here, I've got somebody's name that's on there embroidered. And so inside, if you open it up, there is, I've just, I wanna show you the kind of the basic construction of it. And I had so much fun playing with this design. I can't tell you, it was just a riot. So when I open it up, you've got some little goodies in there. I have in this bag, this one here I made a little bigger. There are four Lint, uh, Lindor, you know, the, uh, I don't know what they're called. Some kind of, you know, candy inside of it. And it's got um, enough room in there, but you could fill it with jelly beans. You could put anything you want on there because it's just really just a, a nice little gift. And it's a way of putting somebody's name for the place setting. So if you had a specific place where you wanted people to sit, then they could do it. And then when you tie it back up, you've got those little leaves that are out there. I've made a few different sizes of them. This one is one that will fit. It's uh, about 240 millimeters wide. This one is about 257. So there's a bit of a difference. And if you don't have a hoop that is 10 inches wide, you can shrink it down and make it in an eight inch wide hoop. Um, that's the nice thing about a lot of designs is you can take the size right on your machine and change it. So I used, when I was doing this, this is the basic layout of this design. When I was making it, this I made in digitizing. All right, on my Sonet embroidery, I created the design. And really all it was is five boxes that I put next to each other. And then afterwards, I decided to add the leaf because I thought that would make it kind of nice. Now, the the hoop that I'm working with right here is the 260 by 260 hoop, which is a square hoop. And the nice thing about this one is, let me put it over here so I've got more room. The nice thing about this is you don't have as much fabric waste, uh, not fabric waste, but stabilizer waste. I'm using Aqua Magic in the stabilizer as my stabilizer. And before I had my fabric in here, I fused two pieces of fabric. You can see I've got green on this side and red on this side. I fused two pieces together with Stick and Fuse 2, which is an Inspire product. And if you uh, can't get that, there's also Steam Seam 2, but I much prefer the Stick and Fuse 2. Um, it tends not to be tacky, it doesn't gum up your needle, and it's really the best product. But if, if you're having trouble getting it, then uh, Steam Seam 2 will work too. So after that was done, I laid the square of fabric that had both of them on there, and it's stitched in place. This, it's like a triple stitch, quadruple stitch. It stitched all the lines of the box to make it easier for me to be able to cut away. And uh, I'll put this down and just pull this up a little bit closer to you. All right. So you'll see these little lines on the edge 
that's the seam allowance. I'm going to go and sew this together so I show, can show you how it gets sewn together. But after there's two colors, the first color is just the lines to show you where the box is going to be. And then the machine stops and then you cut away all the rest of the fabric and it will do a satin stitch just on the V, the top and then the leaf. It's not going to do it everywhere because the rest of that's going to be hidden inside and there is no rough edges or anything because you fuse them together. You don't have to worry about that. So I think maybe we'll go over to the machine and I'll show you how I sewed this together. And uh, I hope that you like this idea because I think it would be really fun on a table setting to be able to take um, have everybody's name. I like the idea of having the name on a separate piece rather than sewing it onto one of the leaves. Because if you sew the, the name on a separate piece, then you can always re-gift it, right? Like on this one, I decided I didn't have enough time. I just hand wrote it with a fabric pen. But this leaf here is separate. When I undo the bow, I can pull the name off and then I can put something else on it if I want, or I can use it to re-gift it. The other thing that you can use these for are little gift boxes to put, you could put rings or jewelry or all kinds of different things on there. So it's um, really just a fun little gift box that you can use to re-gift as often if you want to. And uh, somebody did have a comment about the idea that you could put crystals along the edge. Imagine how fun that would be if you wanted to put crystals along the edge where all those holes are. Maybe you don't wanna put them every uh, hole, maybe you put them every second hole. Um, but if you love crystals like I love crystals, that would be a really fun idea. So I think that's uh, kind of cute. If anybody's got any questions, make sure to ask and I'll stop as we go. And before I go over to the machine, here's just a cute little idea that you can do if you want to do some sewing and you don't really want to um, be embroidering, but you can do it with embroidery too. These are just two different leaves. What I did was I just printed out a picture of a leaf or you can take a leaf from the trees uh, here in Vermont, our leaves are a little bit past it, so they've curled up a little bit too much. And I've done the same thing. I've fused two fabrics, right? I have one fabric on the front, one fabric on the back. They're very similar and fuse them together. So the advantage of fusing them is you don't get a lot of extra threads around the outside edge. And when you cut them, there's a little bit of extra fullness to the fabric because you've got two layers. So what I did with this one was I put a ribbon through it, and then I tied the name, like that embroidered shape of the name that I did here, and I put that on so that everybody would have one of these on their plates, and then I had matching napkins that I did with my serger. So sometimes it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, complicated. What I, this is a great project if you want to get the kids involved, their grandkids, because what you can do is uh, trace, get them to trace the leaf shape on the fabric and then they can be cutting all these shapes away and they'll do all the work for you but they'll have a lot of fun doing it and it's a nice little easy project to get the kids or grandkids involved in and I think it's kind of fun after what I did was I just stitched through like the vine the veins of the leaf I just added a little stitch with a sewing machine and if you've got a youngster who um, is comfortable sewing, that would be a simple, easy sewing for them to do too. But I kind of like it stacked together with two leaves. It gives it a little bit of a, a more modern look to it than just having one leaf. So there's another idea for, for what you can do. All right, we're going to move over to the machine and I'm going to change my camera. And let me just, uh, I think I'm going to use this camera here. Now I'm on a straight stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'll give you an example of how this works here, okay? So here's my fabric. You can see the lines. This is my seam allowance. So if you want the green to be on the outside, then you fold the red together. If you want the red to be on the outside, then you fold the green. And that's just a personal choice. You don't even have to do these colors right? Uh, there's a lot of non-traditional colors now that you could use. And if you wanted to make something like this for Hanukkah, you could obviously use the blue and silver and they would make a beautiful little gift box for Hanukkah too. Although I know Hanukkah's over with, 
it's still it's an idea from next year. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to have the green on the outside. So I'm going to fold the red together so that my seam allowance will be on the inside, just like a traditional seam. And I'm going to sew from here to here. And I'm just stitching on the line. And then I'll back up because I want to anchor that in really good in case somebody is a little rough opening up their present. All right, there's one side done. So now you can see that that's starting to form the box. I'm moving over to the next corner. And it's always the two that are attached to each other. You can see the seam here and the seam here. Those two are attached to each other. I'm just going to fold the fabric back like that. And then I'm going to go backwards. And this only makes takes a couple of minutes to do. You're going to be surprised at how fast this is. All right. There's my next seam. The two that are together, I just fold it back. And because they're both pieces of fabric, they're stiffer, but they're not hard to work and not hard to fold. And I'm stitching right on the line that where the thread is. But if I missed it and I took a little deeper seam, that would be all right, too. There's my last piece where I'm going to fold them together. And then my box is done. The only thing, whoops, I have my thread came out here. The only thing that I have left to do is, and I have to make an adjustment here in a second. The only thing I have left to do is to sew the ribbon on. And all I'm, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Here we go. So I'm not going to cut my thread, so I'm going to come over and switch my camera so I can show you up close. All right. So there it is. Obviously, you'd want to be cutting your threads, getting rid of all the little extra threads you've got hanging around. All right. I'll just do a few of them to make it a little tidier. There. Now, you flip it right side out. And now I have my little box. And then the very last thing I need to do before I fill it with candy is decide, am I going to sew the ribbon in place or am I going to just tie it on? So if I'm going to sew the ribbon in place, what I'll do is I'll tie it on the outside of one of these leaves and just sew it so that it's in place. And that's really easy. I can You can see if I lay it down like that. Sew it in place, and then you can go and tie it together. The other thing you can do if you don't want to sew it together is just take yourself a couple of the candies. And, you know, jelly beans. Think about all the kids' uh, things that kids love at Christmas time or the holidays, something that you really love, put it together like this. And then you're just going to take this ribbon. I'll just wrap it around twice like that. All right. Tie it in a bow. And then this one, because I have the red inside, let me just tie it in a bow here so you can see it. And I won't tie it too tight so I can make it come out. Apparently, there we go. All right, so there's my little, these are just standing at the top. And then you can kind of turn them and separate them out so that they all show like that. Kind of nice. Really quick, easy little project. If you like the idea, you can even expand on it and add it and make them even bigger than that. But I made it so that it would fit the uh, 10 by 10 in, uh, 10 by 10 inch hoop. And, you know, people wonder sometimes why you would want to have different size hoops. I love to have the right size hoop for the project I'm working on so I don't waste the stabilizer. And um, the, the 10 by 10 inch hoop is something I use all the time. If you have 
a Creative Sensation Pro or 4.5 and you have your biggest hoop is 360 by 200, there's also a 200 by 200 hoop. So just bring the design in, make it a little bit smaller and it will fit perfectly. You'll have plenty of room to be able to do that and you can do that right on the machine. All right, so let's look at some other ideas when it comes to um, our, you know, we were talking about lace and things like that. There are a ton of really pretty Christmas ornaments that you can get in the library. And there's also ways that you can make these in your machine. So let me just go to the library for one moment. All right. And this is the design that I made and that you're going to get if you come and look on the uh, Thoth, uh website next week. You'll see that it's there somewhere toward the end of the week. Now, there was a question about what stabilizer did I use for the box? I use the Wash Away Aqua Magic. That's my favorite Inspire Aqua Magic. And if you're going to use it for the 260 by 260 hoop, you need that wider 16 inch length because otherwise you're going to be piecing it. All right. Now, if I go in here and I, I can just do search and there's there's a whole bunch of new designs that were added. Some of these funky ladies are really fun. And if you just go down a little bit, you've got some cute holiday ornaments and designs. And I'm just going to go one more. These designs, as you're coming down here, they don't look like much until you select them. When you select them, you'll see that there's a picture that shows you it's from a whole collection. And you can make a wine bottle holder that's got a, a the Chris the Santa's hat is separate. These are really cute little pants and they've got suspenders with them. And when you go and look at them, there's also a lot of other um, individual name tag placement tags that you can make for um, making your gift cards. Now, when you look down and scroll down, you'll see there is an instruction booklet. It doesn't show up red until you put your mouse over it, but this will really come in and then you can kind of see the pictures a little bit more clearly. There's some really very, very simple stockings that you could make. There's the uh, one part of the design for the wine holder. And then the next one is on the next one. So this gives you a lot more information about how to make the designs. And it makes it a little bit easier for you to understand what you should do. So I'm just going to get out of that and come back here. But I think sometimes we don't realize what some of these designs are until we start looking at them. And I think there's a ton of really fun and exciting Christmas ornaments and Christmas designs that are in the library. So if you haven't looked, go in and check them out because there's a lot of uh, fun things that are there. One of my favorite is the gnomes. And if you put gnome, it will bring you this gnome and they're really cute ones. There's some endless designs. These are really popular these days. These are gnomes that are hanging on a rope and this is an endless design that goes with them. Here you have a, uh, Mrs. Claus, applique gnome, and a Mr. Claus. And I actually did stitch him out. I'm not sure if I could put my hands on him right now, but he's adorable. And I did do a three-dimensional uh, gnome, like the way they've got the information there shown. And it, uh, I think down here, there is the information booklet on how you can make three-dimensional gnomes if you want to. So look for those instruction booklets because they will help you to make some of those creative projects. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in and oops, hold on a second here. I dropped something. Here's another idea for somebody was talking about lace ornaments and uh, snowflake ornaments. So these are, this is not really a snowflake, but it's kind of a lace design. It works the same way though as a snowflake design. You can make them just as a circle, but then they become an individual design, a very flat type of ornament. What you can do with many of them, and I did put a little bit of the stiffener on this. You can see that I kind of cut a little groove out of this one. And this one is symmetrical. It goes, and where did it close up? Oh, look at that. It closed up on me. So each of these, I cut the design. I put them on top of each other. One of them I cut on the bottom and the other one I cut on the top. And then all you do is pull this through. See now that it's different. And now I have a three-dimensional ornament. And this is even prettier if you were to um, stitch three of them. 
And then you could do the same thing. Add the third one in there. I didn't glue them together because I wanted you to see how they pulled apart. And look at how easy that is to do. If a design doesn't have a lot of stiff uh, stitches in it and it's a little bit too soft, adding the stiffener will kind of help to give it a bit of solidity to it. But once you've got it like this, you can take, uh, you can do a, a couple of different things. You can just take a stitch going through all the holes, right? Go through the holes in the top and just sew the top together and sew the bottom. I usually like to take a little easier way and I'll put something like a little fabric glue. Um, there's all kinds of different fabric glues you can use, but you're looking for something that will dry fast. You don't want to take, you know, half an hour having to hold it there. This stuff is Roxanne's basic glue. It'll glue in about 20, 30 seconds. And you just put a dab in each of the places and try and hold it together. And then after that's done, I might decide to add one of those little hooks. I could add some wire. And, you know, like a lot of times we could add these little beads to it. We could really make a nice little design up above or maybe something that hangs down below and that we put, uh, what are those things called that, you know, that they've got, a, oh, I've forgotten what the name is. They've got a, a little ball and they've got lots of threads that hang down. You'll see them in home decor a lot, but that would be kind of fun to have some beads that hang down and then have that um, little, you know, the threads that are there, or you can make your own for that matter, the same uh, way. The more creative, like look at all the yarns I've got. This is a yarn, believe it or not. It's very thin, it's very strong, but it's got little sequins in it. And I don't have the name of it. Don't ask me. But when you get out there and you start looking around, you'd be amazed what you can find. So any design you want, a tassel, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> it would have come to me in an hour or two. All right. But I think something like this little lace design, if you put some beads in it and then hang a tassel from it, or you can do something up here and put a bead up top and then put your hook up there. You can really take something that was very, very simple and very one dimensional and turn it into something that is really spectacular. Now, you don't have to use white thread, of course. Most of them I did not use white because I find it's really hard to see the detail of it. But look at how fun that is, that it is. You can literally see that that's three dimensional. And if you were to do this with the third one, you would end up having six different pockets that would be all individual you could there's a, a lace design that's in there that's an angel that would work really well for this you could make the angel be three-dimensional you would end up having six wings and the dress would kind of fill out and I originally got that idea from it because I saw this little bell and I thought well, that would make a beautiful angel I'm going to make some lace to go around it and then I'll put a little bead as the the head of it but the more I started playing with this idea of having the three-dimensional ornaments, it really kind of, um, it, I got excited about it because it's really different. And people who've seen some of the things you embroider might not ex, uh, really think about how these can be made in three-dimensional uh, cases. Now, you can also do things like take a little applique picture. Remember on the little box that we did? I just print, took a fabric sheet and printed that. And that could be going on to the little box so everybody could go and find their picture. And I think that's kind of like the, the fun things that people would see. They'd all want to see everybody's picture that they had on there. This is our grandson, Finn. Oops, there he is straight up. But he looks adorable. And I made him for a family tree. And I thought, well, that would be really cute on this little box. It's just about the right size. So I made the applique two inches and did it like that. So what I'm gonna do now, which I think is so incredible that our machines have the ability to make appliques, to bring in decorative stitches, and a lot of our machines can do that. So um, I'm gonna go over to my creative icon and show you how you can make your own Christmas ornaments or tags where you could put a gift card in the back of it and uh, all right on the machine. Even if you don't have any software, you can do that. Then I'll come and show you how you can do it on the machine. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to switch over and go back to the screen. Let me get my pillow here. All right. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to embroidery because I'm going to make this an embroidery. And down at the bottom, I have 
wait a second here. I'll give you a better view. Applique Creator. So if I touch Applique Creator, I have a lot of different shapes. I've got basic shapes, and then I got dingbat shapes. So there's a little person. You've got a boot. You've got glasses. You've got a little um, kind of banner thing that's going on there. I'm going to start simple. I'm going to go and choose a circle. All right. You can change the size of it. Let me just close this window down so you can see it a little better. Make it whatever size you want it to be. And if you're making an ornament for them, and I probably wouldn't make it more than four inches, more probably three inches would be a good size. And then all I have to do is say, okay, if I wanted to use different decorative stitches, I can go up here to the auto load, auto fill, and it will give me a lot of different decorative stitches. And the thing about an applique is it will do, there's a different stitch. And so I can choose, let's use that one. I'm going to use that one. The main thing you want to remember is you're going to be cutting the fabric around from the outside. So you don't want your outside border to be too complicated because it'll mean you have to cut a little bit more in detail. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into applique. So I deselect, deselect. Oh, wait a second. I got to say, okay. And then I'm going to deselect because I want to go back in and I need to get a little loop for my ornament to hang on. So I'm going to choose the circle again, and I'm going to make it really small. Okay, I'm just going to drag these boxes and make it very small. And I can, if I feel like my fingers is uh, harder to do, I can also manipulate the size by making it like this. So what I want to do is I want to put that so that it's going to be overlapping the design of the applique that I'm doing. All right, I don't want to make it that small, maybe a little bit bigger. All right, now I'm going to go to position and I'm just going to move it down. And now I'm going to say, okay. So now I have my applique ornament and I've got a little hook for it to hang on. If I wanted to bring in decorative stitches, this would be a good time to do it. I could go to sequence creator. Now, I'm not really sure how wide that design is. So let's check and see how wide my applique is. Right now, the size of it is 97.6. So I want to make some stitches that are going to be no wider than 97.6. So I'm going to go to sequence creator. And I think I'm going to bring in a ribbon embroidery uh, stitch. So I can find them in menu not, uh, eight, and I'm just going to use a single one. Let's choose this one right here. So I've got one design, and then to get multiples of them, I can touch duplicate. And now I probably should figure out how long my line is. To see how long my line is, I'm going to touch information. My finger's not working well today. There it is. Right now, that line is 107, which means it's wider than the, the uh, design that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete one of them. All right. So now it's 81. So I'm going to say, okay. And there's my stitch, my decorative stitch. And I'm going to move one over here. And remember, this is a ribbon stitch, right? I'm just going to go and select it this way, make it a little easier to get. And I'm going to move it up. Whoops, don't want to change the size. So I need to think about what I'm touching. If I want to new, move it, I need to make sure that position is selected. And now I'm going to move it up like this. There we go. And now I'm going to touch duplicate. And I'm going to touch mirror image side to side, and I'm going to add another one and move that one over here. So they're kind of mirror images of themselves. Just to kind of give you an idea. Now I could go back in and add another design down the center. Now this is an example of an applique shape where I added a double wedding ring, a double ribbon stitch, and then I added some other decorative stitches. And then that kind of filled the whole design that I did. This one was sewn on a pillow, so it didn't need to be freestanding. 
but this will be a freestanding ornament if I want to make it that way. The only thing I might need to do is change the order of things. So here, when I touch the layers button, it shows me all of the order of everything that I'm doing. The first is the applique because I brought it in first. Then there was a little hoop uh, loop for it to stitch with. And then I have my two decorative stitches. I might want to move these up or down. Maybe I want the loop to stitch first, which I do. So there's three lines right here. All you have to do is touch it and drag and it will change the order of the stitch out. So it's really kind of fun and cool. And you're using a lot of the features that are built into your machine to play around with making some of these. And I'll come back to my camera so you can kind of see. Let's see. So when I made these, this was just done to kind of have fun with it. The idea that you could bring your decorative stitches in and put them together, but because we went in and did an applique, the way an applique will stitch out is it's going to stitch there's three levels of the stitch, right? The first one is to show you where to lay your fabric. If you have fabric that you fuse together, like two layers of fabric, this one here, I fuse the green and the red together. That becomes your basic applique shape. And then it will do a double stitch around the fabric so that it shows you where that you've got to cut away. I'm using Aquamagic all the time for that. And then when I cut away the extra fabric, then it'll do the decorative stitch that I've chosen on the outside of it. Now, what I like to do for a lot of them is when I'm doing that final stitch for the applique, if I'm doing it as a gift card, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put a piece of that uh, heavier plastic on the back of it. And then what it'll do is I can open it up and then I can slide a gift card in there. Now, if you're going to do something like this and put a gift card in there, make sure you tell people that you're giving it to that there's something on the back that they need to look at because they might just look at the front and never realize the gift card's in there. And so that might be a problem. Just, uh, you know, don't assume they're going to see it. They're going to look at the name. They're going to look at the, the ornament, but they might not realize it's back there. But the idea of putting a, a little extra pocket on the back is really pretty simple because you can do it very easily. You could even do a pocket on the front and make it an actual pocket if you wanted to, but I'm not seeing any questions. So I guess I'll keep going, but I hope you enjoy some of these ideas and think about uh, making some of these for the holidays coming up because everybody needs a little, you know, whether it's a postman or somebody else like you like to do something for, it's kind of fun to have something that you've made that's specially from you. And the, um, this is a, an ornament. It's not an ornament. It's a luggage tag that I made. And this is exactly how I made it. I made the loop up here and I used a vinyl, like a pretend vinyl for it. And I did the applique letter as uh, right in the applique. You can make that uh, initial and make it any size you want to. On the back, I did put that piece of plastic and I put a business card in there but that would just as easily be a gift card. And that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. By having the plastic back there, it's see-through, so they should be able to see it's there, but it just make it big enough so that you know your gift card can fit into it. This for me is a luggage tag I use for my luggage. So when you add the plastic is if you're gonna do, and that's, that's a good question of why I was asking this, okay? When you're thinking about how you're laying things together, you might want to use something a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. So maybe you have one fabric on the front and you might stitch this on puffy foam. Imagine how fun that could be. You can get um, through your store, you can get puffy foam. You could stitch it right on the puffy foam and then you could do all the decorative stitches. And then the last step, when it's doing the applique, I would do the applique edge at the last step again. And I would lay the fabric on the back if I wanted to cover up all the decorative stitching. And then I would lay the plastic on top of it. And then when I was going to do that double stitch, it would hold everything in place. Then you cut all the fabric away from the top and also underneath from the pieces that you had underneath. So the question is, if you were to make three of the white ornaments, 
where would you where would you cut so i'll 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 show you that sorry i don't read and talk at the same time very well but anyways these are a lot of fun things that you can do. What's important for no matter what you're going to do is think about the order that you want things to stitch out. Do you want to see the decorative stitching on the back of the ornament? Because it's not going to look as nice on the back as it is on the front. I usually like to have my main fabric on top. Then I'm going to put a wash away stabilizer underneath that will wash away when I'm done. I'll do all of the decorative stitching. And the applique I'm going to do when I'm ready to start cutting fabric away. When you add the fabric in the back is when it does the first applique around, you know where the fabric's going to be and you know how big it is. Then you can take the hoop off, turn it upside down, tape it in a place, and then go and do the double stitch. And if you really want it strong, do that double stitch a second time will give you a lot of extra strength. Then when that's done, you've got the plastic that's on the very, very bottom, touching the machine. After you're done, you cut it all away. You do the decorative stitch for it. And if I have a chance, I will actually leave fabric. Like in this one here, I knew this was going to be a luggage tag. I wanted this to be really strong. So what I did was I left that marine vinyl in that satin stitch where the ring is at the top. I left it there and I just trimmed it close. So I know there's fabric in there that it's going to be really strong. If you're just doing it for a little name tag or something, you don't necessarily need it to be that strong. But um, if you're going to do something like a luggage tag or something, you really do not. You can see how strong that is, right? And it's because I left the fabric in there and I trimmed close before it did the satin stitch. You don't need any special needle when you're working with plastic. Actually, plastic is like butter. The needle will just go through. The main really thing that's important is that if you don't use a very thick enough plastic, like this one's pretty thick, that you can perforate the leather, uh, the plastic, the clear plastic. You don't want to use um, too thick of a needle because if you think about it, if the needle is very, very thick and, it's, and it goes through, and if you're using a thinner plastic, it'll just really, the plastic will just fall apart. It won't be there. You need that plastic to be strong enough. And so I usually use a size 80, even with this faux leather that I'm using. And because it's got a little smaller hole, it will perforate the, the vinyl less. The trick is not using a heavy vinyl, all right? When I'm feeling this, and I do think I cut a piece somewhere that I could pick it up and show you, but I'm not sure where it is. I chose a, a plastic that it's not going to stretch and distort, and it's going to be strong enough to hold, even though that all that stitching is happening there like that. There's a million ways you can use these applique shapes to make not just ornaments, not just name tags. Look, you can see here the little one that I made with uh, our grandson. The idea, I could have put a little hook on this one too. But anytime you think of needing an applique shape where it's uh, something, it's right there in your machine. And a lot of our machines have that ability to make the design applique, the uh, the applique creator right in there. So if you're not using it, it's a really great opportunity to start playing with what you're doing. And let's see, is there any other questions? I don't think there's any other question. All right. Now, somebody asked about the idea of these here. If you were to make this and you had two, right? I lined them up so they were right together, the right sides together. And you can kind of see this one, the top got cut at that little dip. On the bottom, I cut in the middle of it, right? I stacked them together and I did one like that. Probably my sensibilities would say I should do two more. And then I would cut two like this and two like that. If you were doing three, then you would just make a choice. Are you going to cut two like this or two like that? And, um, you know, it's it's not hard. It would work the same kind of thing. So the, the Creative 2.0, I does not have the ability to do applique in it, but, and and it's too bad that you've never used your uh, embroidery. But if you have software, you can make applique shapes in the software. The vinyl that I'm using is nothing special, right? You can find it at every craft store, um, you know, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, any of those places. The, the thing is when you go around, feel the different weights of it. The one that I used was yellow. The writing on the um, the picture 
um, the roll of the plastic and it was heavy. They tell you what the weight of the plastic is. So when you're taking the plastic in your hands, if you feel like you can stretch it really easy, just pass that one by. Get something that's heavier. And you'll only choose the wrong one once or twice before you go heavier. It's really worth it to think about choosing that heavier plastic. And I'm sorry I can't find. I did have a piece cut, but I'm not seeing it around here. So it disappeared somewhere on my little travels here. So let me go and show you on the uh, in our software how easy it is to the applique. And uh, I'll go back and ask if there's any questions I haven't answered. I'll go back and ask them, answer them later on. But remember, you know, the um, the woman that has the FOF Creative 2.0, it's never too late to pull it out and start using it. And maybe you want to have a machine that has some new features. So go in and talk to your dealer. And, you know, I'm sure they'd be happy to sell you something that might have more features built into it. Because then you're going to get your owner's classes and start using it. But let me just show you, I'm going to move over to the software for a second. And I'm going to open it up and show you how you can make your appliques. Now, right now, I'm working in my Sonnet Embroidery Platinum. And if I go to frames, I can do this right in where the frames are. I can say, okay, I want a circle or I want an oval. And when I touch it, it will bring it in and it will have all the steps for an applique. And if I wanted to add more things, maybe I wanted to add a little embroidery design to it or somebody's name, I could go in, find a design. Maybe I want to make a little dinosaur or I'm going to add a clownfish. My granddaughter is starting up a fish tank. So I'm going to put a clownfish in here. I could change the size of it, put her name in there. All of that you can do in the software. And it kind of gives you a lot of ability to be very creative because it's it's right there and the fun thing about the software is you can play with this at nighttime when you're watching tv you don't have to necessarily be stitching on your machine when you're doing it so i'm going to go and add her name in i'm going to just go to letters i can choose the font that i want to use i'll use this one I'll, I'll just make it something silly simple and i typed it in and there's her name now it's a little bit bigger so i can shrink her name Put it into place. Now, the one thing I'm missing is my little loop. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see a little better what I'm doing. Do you notice over there on the left, I have all of the different parts of it, right? I've got the applique circle, the fish, her name. I can change the order of it if I want by just moving something up or down, just like I could on my machine. And it's really very, very similar to the way our machines work when you start playing. Now I'm going to go back to the frame. I'm going to get another applique for the little loop. And you can see it came in really big. And I'm just going to, when you see that it's got the fabric in it, that's kind of telling you that it's an applique. And I kind of like distorted my shape there a little bit, but you get the idea. And I want to change the order of it. So I'm going to just go over to the arrows. And I want it to stitch out first before the big oval shape is done. And so there it is. Now I'm going to move my fish down so you can kind of see where it is. All right. And the name. So everything is meant to move around like this very easily. So you can change the order of your stitch up. Now I'm going to come back here. The software is automatically adjusting the stitch count. So you saw that name. Now there's a recommendation that font I used, it recommended 30 millimeters as the size. But I know because I've used that font before that it works really well. When I made it smaller, it changed the stitch count and it took a lot of the stitches away. So it only it is only going to, it'll keep the same density and it will add or subtract stitches as I make it bigger or smaller. Does anybody else have any other questions? Because these are all great questions. Now you noticed, in my little box that I made here, this one is a little bit shiny. I've I've used this stuff before, and somebody had a question in one of my other Facebook Lives, and um, I wasn't quite clear about where you can get this. This is something you can buy at the craft stores, at your quilt stores. Look in your local quilt stores. A lot of times it's going to come in a roll. It'll be a little plastic tube, 
and it's got many different names. It's called glitter, glitter flex, um, glitter sheets. You can also buy it at, you know, your local craft stores. Why I like it is you can see how shiny it is. It makes it look really kind of like glitzy and expensive. And you can get them in sheets. A lot of times they'll be like uh, nine inches or 12 inches. You can get them different sizes. But this will wash well. It doesn't, the sparkle doesn't come off. And it really does kind of like make something look a little bit more expensive. The other thing that it does is it's fusible. So if you're going to use something like this, you don't necessarily have to use the stitch and fuse too. You can just fuse the fabric to it. When I did this one, I want, I knew I was going to make it a little bigger. I wanted the extra thickness to it. So I did put the stick and fuse too, and then the other fabric on top of it. The um, Creative 4.5 has one of them. It does not have... It has either the applique creator or shape creator. I'll check it out and I'll write you a note on the Facebook page to let you know which one it has. But it has one of them. And um, right now my brain won't let me know, won't let me remember which one it is because it's been a little while since I've used the 4.5. But I'll make a note and send it to you um, on the Facebook Live. I'll answer it, okay? And there's another question. With the embroidery stitch out before adding the backing on the applique, with not, it's a choice right? So if I was just taking one piece of fabric and fusing it, then I would not, I would just stitch through all the layers. But if I wanted the back to look nice so that it would look like a really nice, um, you know, gift at the end when you're done, let me just put this back. Then what I would do, what I would stitch the name and the fish first on the main front fabric, whether it was cork that I was using or faux vinyl or just regular fabric. Then when I was ready to do the applique, that would be the last step. I will do the outline around to show me where I need to add the fabric on the back. And then I'm going to take the hoop off, put the fabric on the back. And remember, the plastic is going to be the last one out. It's going to be the one facing the bottom of the machine. So your vinyl or whatever you're putting on the back is going to be fit, the right side is face down the machine. Then you're going to put the clear plastic and then you're going to tape it in place. Then it will do the double stitch and then it will, you'll cut it away and then you will do the decorative stitch around it from there. And the uh, little circle that's at the top, that little hook that you're going to use, it can stay there and you can cut the fabric out um, if there's any fabric in there. And, and it really will make it a lot solider. So I, I tend to do that. If you're just making something really quick and easy, then you don't have to put fabric underneath there. Remember, it's got the double stitch, the single stitch, and then it's got the decorative stitch. So it'll hold together pretty well with that. So I hope you guys are interested in kind of playing around with some of these designs. And uh, make sure you look on the My Sonet Embroidery Library because there really is a lot of fun designs. There's some beautiful snowflakes. There are a lot of three-dimensional pieces, right? I mean, who would have thought that this would have looked like, you know, an Easter egg? But by the time I'm finished with this, I'm going to put some greenery on it. I might put a little poinsettia. I'll have a hanging one here. And then I'm going to put a little tassel down below. So it will really be spruced up and looking completely different by the time I finish um, decorating it. And I, I have all these little beads, some big, some small. I really love the idea of how much it added to it. Like when I pull this down, see how that is? It'll stand up like that. The uh, the other thing I was thinking about making with this one, if I had made the five petals for this bell, I was going to make an angel from this because I would take some of the angel wings that we have and put them behind. And then I was going to use a little wooden bead up here over the little plastic ones to make an angel. So if you're looking to make a little really pretty little angel, this is a really cute design. And um, <laughs> the design, what, the box, when I was talking about the free design, this box, it will not be on the library. It's going to be on the FOF website, FOF.com. And if you look at the blog that's on the website, that's where you're going to see it posting. And I'm going to put the instructions on how to do it. But if you're looking at, say you want it, you're interested in this one here, let me go and show you how you can find that. I'm going to go to the library. All right, and I'm in the library now. 
And I'm just going to put freestanding embroidery. I could put freestanding lace. And then when I search, look at all these great designs that could work for it. Now, there's the bell that I used. It didn't really look all that impressive. But when I stitched it out, I thought, oh, that's just beautiful. And so I sent it to my machine and then I stitched out. And after I did one, I thought it was so pretty that it really made sense to be able to. Um, there's the design that I sent to my machine. And um, it just it was just such a pretty design. You can see how intricate that looks. And I was really sorry that I didn't make the fifth one because I think this would give it a beautiful skirt for a uh, little angel. So I might post this somewhere, a picture of the, this done as an angel. And you'll see there'll be a little head and some wings and everything with it. But I'm going to use five sections together with it. When I uh, sewed them together, really all I did was I pinched the front and the back, the two pieces, and I did a zigzag close to the edge. I tested it with a straight stitch, but it felt like it wasn't as nice as the uh, zigzag was. So there's some give with it that it could open and close. And that was very, very easy to sew this together. The uh, question about the 2144, those applique shapes are not in the 2144. There's a lot of changes that have happened over the years. And in the uh, Creative Sensation Pro has applique shapes. And the Creative Icon's got an absolute ton of applique shapes in there. And they're a lot of fun to play with. But remember, if you have a Creative Sensation Pro or you've got the Creative Icon, you can bring all your decorative stitches into embroidery. And so you can do the same thing with the 4.5. You can bring all your decorative stitches in because Sequence Creator works with all of those machines. So you can bring them in and make rows of stitches. And you could find an ornament that you like. And then bring in your decorative stitches and use uh, an already existing embroidery design, but put applique um, decorative stitches on top of it. So the idea is to play, have fun, and learn something about your machine. So if you have a lot of these great features, try and incorporate them into your next project. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing some of these uh, ideas and, and creative things. I really think you're going to love this little project because it took me no time at all to do this. I was stitching it out and I made the little embroidery for the name that I did here. And it really was something so quick. You saw how fast it sewed up, right? So there's not a lot of skill. It's something anybody can do. You just need some fusible. And um, I do not think the little box will be available in Germany. It is something that's going to be posted on the uh, U.S. FOF Facebook page. But I think you could put in uh, change the country. When you pull up the false site, on the top right-hand corner, you'll see a flag. You can go in there and change the, com the country, and then it will let you see features from other countries. So you could put the U.S. in there. At least I believe that's true. The last time I checked, it's true. Give it a try. You never know, right? And uh, if it doesn't work, let me know, and we can figure something out. But uh, I I'll we'll make sure somehow that we uh, get it to you, okay? So I hope you've joined me enjoyed um, joining me this hour and had fun. I hope it inspires you to try something new and uh, especially this little one by next Friday. I hope that it'll be posted. So look for these little gift boxes and um, I'll, I'll answer any other questions as we go by. So I'm going to say goodbye and I hope you have a wonderful week and, and um, the holidays are moving fast amongst us. So I hope you're starting to get prepared and making some little gifts. So Bye-bye. It's been wonderful.